The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 26 and 27. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on August 29th, 1973, in London, England. Translation If, however, you think that the soul is perpetually born and always dies, Still you have no reason to lament, O mighty armed. Kutachainam nishtajatam nishtam vaman nashi nitam Tathapitam mahabaho nainam so chito arahat So Krishna is putting forward the modern scientific view. <clears throat> the modern scientific view is that there is no soul. Uh, life is generated from matter. <clears throat> By combination of material elements at a just like chemical combination, you mix acid and soda, alkali and acid, there will be some reaction, evolutions, movement. Similarly, uh, the Buddhist philosophy, uh, mostly, they do not believe in the existence of the soul. Uh, the Buddhist philosopher thinks that the combination of matter makes a living symptom. Their ultimate goal is nirmana. Nirmana means stop this combination. Uh, due to this combination, we feel pains and pleasure. Therefore, if we uh, disintegrate the combination, there will be no more pains and pleasure. Materialistic. Their solution, pains and pleasure, any philosophy or any religious system, Ultimately, aims at authentic dukkha nirvitti. Dukkha means pain. Nirvitti. Nirvitti means stop. Why people go to the church? Because they feel some pain. They go to church or temple to appeal. If there is somebody as God, they think like that. Let me appeal to the uh, Supreme Person so that my distress may be mitigated. So, uh, aim is authentic dukkha nirvitti. We are also uh, cultivating this Krishna consciousness. Our aim is also the same, dukkha nirvitti. Krishna says, janva mitri jarabhyadi dukkha dusa anudarsanam. We keep always in view that in this material existence there are four kinds of miserable condition primarily and to stop this. Dukkhālāyama sāsata. So everyone's aim is dukkha nirvitti. It may be presented in a different way. So the Buddha philosophy is also dukkha nirvitti. Stop pains. Ānandamaya uh, obhyāsā, we are by nature we want blissfulness. 
But we do not know how to become actually happy and blissful. That is ignorance. In the material world, they also want to enjoy everyone. Uh, they are thinking that this uh, wine, oven, meat eating, gambling, uh, intoxication, these things will give me pleasure. So Atantik Dukkha Nubhiti. The Bhagavad says that Atantik Dukkha Nubhiti means ultimate solution of miserable condition uh, is in the fact that we realize God and we go back to home, back to God. This is our pleasure. And persons who cannot understand what is God, what is kingdom of God, uh, they want to adjust. The aim is the same, atyam vidukha nivritti, ultimately solution of all. In a different way. So, Krishna said, uh, putting forward the Buddha philosophy, which was formerly known as uh, Lokai Tikas and Vaibhasikas, uh, the two kinds of philosophers. Uh, they did not really, uh, mostly the materialistic philosophers, they have no understanding of the soul, therefore they have different kinds of theories which we do not accept. Krishna says that if you are not sanatanist or followers of the Vedic principle, if you think that your uh, principle and views are different, that uh, by combination of matter, uh, this existence coming, atharachinam uh, nitya-jātam, Nitta means by combination of just like so many things are taking place by interaction of different material elements. Uh, similarly, if you don't believe in this existence of this soul, if you think that uh, there is no soul, the life is the result of combination of matter, nitta uh, and when this combination of matter is somehow or other dismantled, then there is no more soul. It is finished. It began at a point by combination of matter and it ends in a point by disintegration of matter. If you think like that, then also tathāpi tam mahābhāva. Krishna is uh, criticized or John Mahabhava. Actually his Mahabhava means mighty arm. One who has got a very strong mighty arm. Uh, we can fight very strongly. Then also, uh, why should you give up your uh, fighting spirit? Why should you lament for combination of chemicals and material elements. Suppose this house is a combination of material elements. So somehow or other, if it is dismantled, who laments for it? No sane man will lament. Similarly, if you have no idea of the existence of soul, then, then also you do not require to lament. Tathāpitaṁ mahāvāva nainam suchitaṁ arhasī. For one who has taken his birth, death is certain. And for one who is dead, birth is certain. Therefore, in the unavoidable discharge of your duty, you should not lament. This is karma bhāya. Uh, 
in the previous verse, Krishna tried to explain Bhagavad Bhav, Nastika Bhav, atheism. Atheist means one who does not believe in the soul and God. These are correlative terms. If you understand what is soul, then you can understand what is God. If you understand what is God, then you can understand what is soul. But those who are agnostic, atheists, uh, they neither believe in God nor in the soul. So combination of matter, here Krishna says in a different way, the combination of matter is taking place and again it is being dismantled. That is going on. Uh, either there is soul or not soul, just like Darwin's theory, uh, evolution of material body. So that is going on. Uh, one body is created and the same body again annihilated another body created, another body, the same body, and it is going on. So where is the cause of lament? You cannot stop. You cannot stop this process. Jātasya-hi dhvamitu dhvam janma mitasya ca tasmād apari hājji arthi duty. The same thing is going on. Duty is very important thing. Krishna is stressing on it. The one cannot stop his duty. Then he becomes uh, sinful. That is karma by. He, just like uh, so many people, they argue that we, if we discharge our duties nicely, uh, then uh, where is the need of accepting God? The Karmavad philosophy is that if there is God, then uh, He is giving us the result of our activities. As if I do uh, nicely, then He gives me nice opportunity. Uh, and if I do not do things very nicely, I am put into suffering. So there is a karma fall data decides, there is a high court judge. He is giving judgment according to the case, different cases. Similarly, our goodness or badness will be decided according to your karma. That is also fact. Then what is the use of accepting one God? If I do my duties very nicely, then he must give me nice result. Why should I worship him? Why should I become a devotee of God? It is his duty. This is karma. Everyone is trying to avoid uh, the principle of devotional service. It is only we, the Krishna conscious person, we are advocating uh, the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita, Manmana Bhagavad Bhakta, Madhyari Mahanamaskuru. Uh, Krishna says that all is think of me. This Karnavad is, they will say, why shall I waste my time? thinking of Krishna. Uh, if I do my duty nicely, then I will get good result. Why shall I be devotee of Krishna? This is their argument. Uh, one uh, Arya Samadhi postmaster, long ago, not very long ago, 1956, uh, 1956, in Delhi at that time, I was publishing this Back to Godhead. So uh, we 
had concession rate for posting, and it was to be delivered to the postmaster. So the postmaster was talking with me about the paper back to God. Here he raised the same question. He said, if we do our duty nicely, then what is the use of worshiping God? If we become honest, if we become moral, uh, if we do not do anything which is harmful to anyone, in this way, if we act, then where is the... because our paper's name is back to Godhead. So he was indirectly protesting, okay, what is the use of propagating this philosophy of Godhead? If we act nice, the Arya Samaj's view, they are called, uh, there is a, in this name, what is called? Mm-hmm. You forget now. So, moralist, the technical name there is. <coughs> anyway, so, this is their point of view. How to avoid God? So I reply that if one is not God conscious, he cannot be moralist, he cannot be truthful, he cannot be honest. This is our point of view. You study the whole world only on these three points, morality, honest, uh, and due to fall, so many nice things are there. But uh, if he is not God conscious, he cannot continue such thing. He must fail. Uh, even the, uh, there are so many instances. Uh, even amongst the a devotees, because this uh, material world is made so that you cannot continue this principle uh, perpetually. Uh, that is explained in the Bhagavad Gita, I will find. Because the three uh, modes of material nature is working, even if you are on the platform of goodness, the other modes of material nature we try to attack you. And your goodness, morality, uh, honesty, this thing will be uh, polluted by the onslaught of the other two uh, inferior modes of nature. Therefore sometimes we find that a very nice man committing some uh, sinful activities. So the decision of the Srimad Bhagavatam is that harāva bhaktasya kuto mahad guna. Mahad guna, uh, we can find it easily, just like we say uh, that no illicit sex, no meat eating, we consider this is sinful. But there are other big, big leaders, politicians, philosophers, even religious priests, they do not think that uh, this is immoral or this is sinful. Meat eating is sinful. Wow, what is the sin there? Uh, illicit sex, uh, what is the wrong there? Intoxication, what is wrong there? They do not find any immorality. So this standard of morality, there cannot be fixed up if one is not God conscious. There cannot be. Standard of morality, standard of goodness, cannot. Be. That is the decision of this Srimad Bhagavata. Rāma bhaktasya kuto mahadguna. Lack of Krishna consciousness. They think that animal has no soul. 
they do not accept this morality that animal cannot be killed. Uh, it is sinful, it is immoral. Uh, they have created their own theory. Uh, so without being standardized by Krishna consciousness or God consciousness, you cannot find the uh, standard platform of morality, honesty. These things you cannot find. This is not possible. Therefore, the verdict of the Srimad Bhagavatam is Parava Bhakta Sakuto Mahadavana. Just like if you do not follow a standard law, how you can fix up this is morality or this is honesty or dishonesty? That must be standard law. And who can give you the law? Unless he is the greatest authority. So, uh, law changes according to different countries, climate, situation. So, man made law cannot give you standard morality, honesty. It is not possible. There is one who will think this is morality, another will think, no, this is not morality. Same thing. Keep to the left, keep to the right. Somebody says, keep to the left is right. Somebody says, keep to the left is right. Manorafe nasato dhavato vahi. Because those who are not Krishna conscious, they are hovering on the mental plane. They cannot be, there cannot be any fixed up morality, honesty, dishonesty, no. And Rascals will also say, Jatamat, Tatamat, Tatapat. Means, whatever you think is all right, there is all right. According to you, your conception, this is right. And according to my conception, both of them are right. How both of them can be right? So these contradictions, opposing elements, will continue unless there is Krishna consciousness. So this is not a fact that the karmavadis simply by discharging your duties nicely. This is on principle it is all right. But we must know what is actual morality. There are so many examples that like uh, when there is war to kill the enemies, that is morality. But in peaceful condition, if you kill a person, there is immorality or sin. The process is the same, morality uh, or immorality, the process is the same. But sometimes it is moral, sometimes it is immoral. How it will be standardized? Therefore, Bhagavad says, dharmandu sakshat bhagavat pranitam. Real dharma, real religion, morality, honesty, they can be decided on the words of the Supreme Law. That is it. When Krishna says, this is all right, then it is all right. When Krishna says, it is not right, then it is not. This is our decision. We Krishna conscious man, we simply accept, and that is a fact. That is a fact in this way because Krishna is the greatest authority, supreme being. Supreme means the greatest authority. Just like state says, now it is what time? If you kill a number of enemies, then he will be awarded with gold medal. The same process of killing. But at this, and another time, when there is no war, if you kill one person, he will be hanged. The killing process is the same, but the judgment is given by the greatest authority, the government. This is all right, this is not right. Therefore, 
standard of morality means to abide by the orders of the greatest authority. That is standard of morality. This is the conclusion. Uh, you cannot make your uh, own morality. If Krishna says, this is all right, then it is all right. Otherwise it is not. Krishna says, patram bhuttvam phalam toyam jomi bhaktya prajatsi. If somebody offers me uh, uh, vegetables, leaves, uh, grains, milk, water, flowers, uh, then I accept. So this is nice food stuff. Uh, it is to be accepted because Krishna likes to eat this. Krishna can eat anything because he is the supreme. He is omnipotent. He can eat anything. But he particularly mentions this. Therefore, food stuff made of these ingredients is nice, sati, goodness. So, so the karmabha that you follow morality, you'll get good results. But where is your morality? Because you are disobedient to God. In the beginning of your life, you are immoral. You are disobeying the greatest authority. There is another example, a story, that a gang of thieves, they stolen some property from different houses, then out of the village they are dividing amongst themselves the booties. So one thief is saying, please divide it morally so that one may not be cheated. Now just imagine, the property is stolen. Where is the morality? There. But when dividing, they are thinking of morality. The basic principle is immoral. Where you can uh, have morality. Uh, similarly, according to Vedic injunction, Isavasamidam Sadvam, everything belongs to the Supreme Personality of God. Uh, it is His property. So, the whole planet is God's property. Whole universe is God's property. But when you are claiming that this is my property, then where is morality? If you, are, if you claim others' property as your property, then where is the morality? So in this material world, uh, such kind of morality, honesty is going on. But our morality is, if Krishna is satisfied, then it is honesty, morality, everything. There are many examples. There is a Pullal Maharaj. Pullal Maharaj is standing and his father is being killed by Nishimnade in his presence. So do you think it is morality that one's father is being killed in the presence of his son and the son without protest is seen with a garland? that as soon as my father is killed, I shall offer this garland to this individual. Is it morality? From material point of view? Uh, we are worshipping Prahlad Maharaj has become Mahajan, uh, the greatest authority in devotional service, but if we study his morality, that he did not protest the killing of his father, rather he was waiting with a garland. That as soon as the killing business is finished, I'll revolve. Mm -hmm. Where is material morality? There is no morality. The gopi, they are young girl, wife of somebody, sister of somebody, daughter of somebody. But when Krishna was playing on his flute at dead of night, uh, they gave up all their engagement and began to run where Krishna is there. So, from basic standard of view, this is immoral. Uh, they are going to another young boy and living family, uh, even somebody, uh, some of the gopis 
Uh, they left their sons also, going to Krishna. From material point of view, this is immoral. So you will find in such a way that uh, what is this from material point of view, immoral, it is the most magnificent morality in relationship with Krishna. And similarly, uh, uh, the, from material point of view, what is moral, that is most, uh, I mean, abominable from the point of view, just like Yudhishthir Maharaj. Yudhishthir Maharaj became very moral. Krishna advised him, just go and tell Dhanacharya that your son is dead, although his son was not dead, because Dhanacharya will not die. Unless he hears the news of the, the death of his son, he will not die. So, so he will not believe any more. But Yudhisthira Maharaj is famous, very moral. So Krishna asked him that you go, otherwise he will not believe anyone. So Yudhisthira Maharaj hesitated. How can I say? Lies. So for this he had to see uh, hell, uh, it became immoral. Mannimitte kritam papam punnaya kalpat. So our standard of morality and immorality is to see whether Krishna is satisfied. If Krishna is satisfied, then it is morality. If Krishna is dissatisfied, then it is moral. And Krishna is representative also. Therefore it is said, Jasya prasādāda bhagavat prasādāda. Jasya prasādāda nagati kutu. Our morality is to satisfy Krishna or his representative, Guru. Jasya prasādāda. If he is satisfied, then it is not. If he is not satisfied, then it is not. Nagati kutu. That is our morality. Thank you very much.